so we are going to start and I'm really happy to see all of you here. And today we are going to talk about scaling and sharing and probably if you, was, if you were at the Dries keynote, uh, Dries mentioned the open wide distribution that was built by the, uh, for the YMCAs. So this talk is gonna be about how we were building actually this distribution and we are building it for federated organizations. So first of all, I would like to ask you to evaluate our session because this is like really important to get feedback in case if you like it, just say I like it. In case you dislike it, just say that you dislike it. And hi, so my name is Alex Shedrov. I'm working at FFW and I'm ke I came here from far Ukraine came here from the Ukrainian community that is so far from here and I'm working in the web development for nine years and I really dream about on music band so I really like music writing some songs lyrics and I hope that at some point I will have like my own band who will do a great music <laughs> all right that's gonna be tough for me to top um, so I'm Craig Polnock. I'm the Associate Vice President of Digital Product and Innovation at the YMCA of the Greater Twin Cities. Uh, I've spent about 20 years doing web product development, um, project management, etc. And unlike wanting to be in a band, um, I'm daydreaming about snowboarding just about all the time. That is my passion and what I like to do. And so today, as Alex mentioned, we're gonna talk a little bit about OpenY and federated distributions. And what OpenY really is, is an open source platform for YMCAs by YMCAs built on Drupal. So let's talk about what federated means and what federated models are. So it's important to understand the YMCA's operating model. We have 874 independent associations in the United States, 2,700 locations servicing 20 million members. What that means is each one of those associations has its own website, its own technology. You heard Dries talk a little bit about that during his keynote. So 800 different associations with 900 different websites. Then if you expand that globally, we operate in 130 countries, 11,000 locations, 58 million participants. So that federated model is huge and unwieldy, and it's a big challenge for us to come up with a unifying digital platform that's going to work for all YMCAs and everybody's needs. And so here's what that looks like globally. Now, if you're in the United States, we are frequently associated with being a gym or things of that nature, but that's not what we do in every one of these countries. In India, for example, we focus a lot on childhood development, education, tutoring, things of that nature. You may not even find a single YMCA gym in a location like that. So whatever it is that we build needs to work for the needs of all of these different YMCAs. So as I mentioned, we're more than just a gym. But for a lot of you, that's the only way that we're seen. We develop youth, we inspire healthy living, we change our communities. The YMCA is one of the largest nonprofits in the world. We have huge goals, but really limited resources and we need to change public perception. Our customers expect us to have great experiences for them online. They don't necessarily care that we have limited budgets and that we're a nonprofit. They wanna be able to sign up for programs, to be able to join a gym online, et cetera, and we're not meeting those needs. So we needed a national tool that could better communicate and deliver our mission digitally and globally. So what is this open Y thing that we've been hearing about? It's really three things. First, it's a philosophy. Just like the Drupal community, it's collaboration that drives innovation and impact. Next, it's the community, the community of YMCA's and technology partners, getting us to work together and work better together. And finally, it is that open source platform for marketing, e-commerce, and digital products. So for the YMCA's, the benefit of Open Y is it's an open platform built by us that we own and we control and that we have the ability to drive the destiny of. We have low switching costs if we want to change or move things around. And one of the things that's really exciting is the freedom to work independently with any agency or partner. Because it's all open source, <clears throat> any YMCA can grab the code and work with whomever they choose. Finally, one of the things that we're really excited about is we've been able to partner with a local charter school in the Twin Cities called Rev Academy. Rev Academy has helped us with programming some of the content for OpenY sites. 
So this brings us the opportunity to get youth involved with YMCAs and do youth development in ways that we've never been able to before. Now for agencies, the value and benefit of OpenY is to reduce the cost of building the basics of a website. And those, that cost savings can be passed on and re-leveraged by focusing on things like marketing campaigns and things that will help YMCAs to grow their revenue and achieve their mission goals and objectives. And finally, for technology partners, by us looking at things with open APIs and open source, we're able to do things in ways that we never were before. We can take a schedule and now display that content on a treadmill with a digital screen. We can create a chat bot, et cetera. All sorts of things that YMCAs were never able to do before, we can now do thanks to OpenY and some of the expanded and enhanced API capabilities that we have with Drupal. So at its core, OpenY is a customer experience platform. It ties in elements and talks to different components like our personal training software, group fitness systems, we do A-B testing, our analytics platforms, all of that is connected with Drupal at the core. Now the operating model for how OpenY is created and built within this federated model is we get investments from national Y associations like the YUSA and larger YMCAs. The YMCA of the Twin Cities, we oversee the strategy, the product development, and the repository owner of OpenY. So we take that investment and then we work with agency and technology partners. We don't have any developers on staff today in the Twin Cities, so we work with wonderful uh, agencies like FFW and people like Alex to build out the OpenY experience. Next, it's really key to get the communication elements right for a big distribution like this. So we have our website, openymca.org. We meet twice annually at summits where we invite technology partners, agency partners, and YMCA associations. We have a Slack channel, a monthly email newsletter, we put out YouTube tutorials, and we have the repository out on GitHub and a page on drupal.org. So there's a lot of politics when it comes to getting something like this adopted across the organization because again, there's no governing body that tells these YMCAs that they have to use OpenY. So the first is making sure that we're sharing a clear vision of what OpenY is, what the benefits are, and that we want it to serve all YMCAs. Next is the inclusion, building alliances, making sure that people have voices, and that we have organic growth. Finally, the decision making has to be very clear. We need to be on message. Uh, there's no buy-in, there's no money that people have to spend to get on OpenY. And then we need to make sure that we're action oriented and that we're taking a we versus a me approach. Our solutions need to work for all, not just me and the Twin Cities, it has to work for all YMCAs. And over the last 10 months, we've had some really great adoption. 21 YMCAs are committed to the platform, either using it today, are already on the platform, or are working towards a site launch, and another 25 YMCAs are evaluating. And these numbers increase all the time. So why did we pick Drupal? Why was that the path that we went down? When we looked at YMCAs and what were they using for their architecture today, most of them were on PHP-based platforms, and a lot of them were already on Drupal, Drupal 7, et cetera. So it made sense for us to go down this path, plus all of the wonderful things that Drupal offers out of the box. And with that, I'm gonna hand it back over to Alex. Yep, thank you, Craig. So first of all, I would like to make a statement. We truly believe that with OpenY, we make the world a better place. And that's not a joke that you may potentially hear in the Silicon Valley TV series. That's the truth that we truly believe in. And the reason for that, because working with nonprofit organizations that care about healthy living, that care about kids, about old people, about people with accessibility problems. So eventually working with organizations that care about three main things, about spirit, about mind, and about body. So and frankly speaking, this is kind of the most inspiring and motivating project in my life that I'm working on. So, cool statement, huh? Probably you may think, what is this crazy guy gonna talk about? So, today I'm going to 
kind of tell you a story how we get to the place where we are now. So we've released the OpenY version 1.0. Bruce mentioned that it's breakthrough for the YMC community. So today I'm going to share with you how we get to the point where we are now. So when we've started working on the distribution, we've realized that first of all, we should really clarify our goals that we should eventually get. We call that the mission of OpenY. And treat it like mission of OpenY from the technical perspective. So as Craig mentioned, we should put the customer into the center of all interactions on the website. And with that, with distribution, we were challenged to provide best customer experience that should be powered by data. It means that staff members, customers of the YMCA, they should get uh, easy access to all trainings, all exercises, all programs that YMCA's like, offer on their website. And with that, also staff members that are working on the content that put some promotion campaigns on the website, they should get a really great experience, really great interface where they can do this. So the next thing, I think right now it's the most important one, the collaboration platform. Because Craig mentioned that there were a lot of different websites powered by Drupal, but there were no centralized place where everyone can contribute something. So let's imagine we have 100 websites on Drupal for different YMCA's and they spend tons of money in order to build different features, but they just do not share them. And they spend money over and over again in order to create new websites. And with that, in case if we have the collaboration platform and centralized place where we will have all the features, we actually reduce the costs that should be spent in order to build new websites because there will be great starting point for new business and for new websites that should be that should be developed. And next one it was the most interesting part for the development team, for the technical guys who was working on this on this project. It's a high, how to provide scalability and flexibility because there are a lot of different organizations. They all have, have different requirements. And with that, in the distribution, we should have like scalable and flexible modules and components that should be just easily disabled or enabled. And the last one, it's kind of, that one summarizes everything that I've just outlined. Because with all those points from the mission of OpenY, we can just rapidly bring the YMC business to the market in case if they have really outdated website on some legacy CMS. So with all those points, they can really bring their business to the market in a rapid way and really quickly. So of course, with the mission, we've learned a lot of things about Open, uh, about sorry, we've learned a lot of things about YMC. So first of all, we've learned the history because this is important to be on the same page with the teams from the YMCA because they have their own philosophy, they have own approaches, they have own workflow that we should follow up in order to deliver a really great product to the YMCA. Also, we've learned a lot about digital products and about their technologies that they are using like they are using a lot of different vendors and third party services that we should create integration with. And of course, learned a lot about brands and guidelines in order to follow their standards that are shared across all departments and organizations. So we've realized that we have a lot of different websites on Drupal. We have a lot of different features on those websites. Why we should develop everything from scratch? We can just take those features, adjust, decouple, and incorporate in top of Y. So here is listed a few organizations that are committed and contributed into the initial version of OpenY, but there are a lot, a, a lot of different YMCs that are contributing right now. It's not listed on this slide. So basically, from the fragmentation of different features we were challenged to assemble the open Y and basically release distribution with all those features. And if we take a look at the flexibility that we should support, we have different types of organizations. So the first one, the small YMCA, they may have only one single 
single building with a gym or with a pool. They have only a few staff, staff members and they do not have that much time in order to maintain content on the website, in order to set up new website on Drupal and do something really difficult with the website. So the next one, the medium YMCA. They may have a few branches, maybe they can support and provide summer camps and free group exercises, but they are not that big as a large YMCA. For the large YMCA, they need a lot of different integrations with the third party services. They need a lot of different features, analytics, trackings, personalization, and that crazy stuff that is really interesting for the developers and technical team. So fr frankly speaking, if we reflect the same on the costs and budget that they have, as well they have like budgets according to their size. So medium MC have limited amount of money in order to set up new websites. But with the platform and with the collaboration philosophy, small YMCA will get an access to features that large YMCA can afford. So before, in order to, as example, to create personal training booking form on the website, small YMCA should pay a lot of money. But with the open wide, since it will be there, they can just take it and use it out of the box. So and we were thinking about architecture of the open one because all those YMCA's, they have different requirements. They have different needs and we should solve all those needs and satisfy everyone who is using open wide distribution. And with that, we treat the architecture of the distribution as an iceberg. So we have something that is not visible at all to the end customers, but it will support and it will move forward our distribution in a long-term run. So with that, we actually started, with that in mind, we started working on the distribution. So first of all, I would like to show you a demo how the OpenWire look like uh, right now. So in order to have an understanding of what I'm talking about from the side, like what do we have out of the box, how you can use it, and you may see from here that we're a little bit ahead of Drupal because Dries, Dries mentioned that they have initiative of having the demo content in the distribution. They have initiative in order to have some basic theme that will be a little bit better than Bartik right now. So we have that in the distribution. As example, we have just demo programs and categories for the YMCA. We have functionality of alerts on the page. We have some elements and components like banner, list of blog posts, some static content with the grid columns. Also, we can open the location finder page. This is just a landing page where we can take a look at the map, all available branches. And for example, in case if we found the favorite branch, we can take a look at the branch working hours, read some, some information about that branch take a look at the blog posts that are associated with this branch. And then we have a lot more features out of the box. So here you can, you can see just some landing page with the static content that could be about page or just looking for volunteers or something like that. And we have the blog section where we can find different blogs. We can filter them by location, by category, by text filter and for example, open the blog post page itself in order to read through the content on the website. So that's the only small amount of features, but that will give you an understanding what we are building and what we have right now. So we've started with development and realized that we have the challenge number one that says how to provide scalability and flexibility. So we've gathered all our team leads and tech leads in order to figure out how actually we are going to provide the flexibility and scalability. And eventually at the end of this meeting, everyone in the group said, all right, challenge accepted. We will work on that and for sure we will be successful at this uh, at the end. So, and with that we came up with the component-based approach. So, you may be familiar with that approach because in Drupal 8 we are following this. 
we are using Drupal modules that are like independent from the system and just have a list of dependencies. So we are using the same approach. And if we take a look at the basic, basic page that we see on all websites that we are seeing in the internet, so we have some general elements. We have header, we have footer, and content editors treat the area between header and footer as the customizable area. So they, they want to play with layouts. They want to place different components in different regions of the layout. So they should have the full control uh, on this customizable area. So let's take a look at the basic landing page that we provide out of, out of the box in the open wide. So we have a few components. So component number one, it's just banner with call to action button. So the second component, just dynamic list of blog posts that are added on the website and promoted to the home page. Then we have a few more components that are static. So we have some static content, titles, labels, and different columns. If we take a look from the perspective which of those components are dynamic and which are static, so the first one is static. We just go to Drupal admin interface, we upload image, we specify some text there, and here we go. So the next one is dynamic one. Whenever we add the new blog post to the website, it appears here. So there is no static reference to all the blog posts that should be visible here. And next two blocks, they are static as well. And with component-based architecture, content editors, they are able to play with the page and place dynamic blocks in between static blocks. And it's great and powerful feature for content editors, and they are happy with that because they can build pages, uh, they can build pages in really easy way, and they can all pages that they can just imagine. So, and for that approach, we are using paragraphs. We are really, we really love paragraphs. In case if you're still not familiar with that module you should definitely go to that link and figure out how it works and how you can use it and adopt your projects. So I mentioned that we treat every block on the page as a component. And in our opinion, every component should consist of. So the first one, the model. Model, this is the place where we store data. This is the storage of our data. That could be content types, media types, taxonomy terms whenever you, whatever you're using on your website. So the next one is a controller. This is something that gets the data from storage and does something with it. So the third one, the view. View, this is the like layer that we have in theme. That's just usual pattern, MVC pattern in from programming. So we are using it in order to build components. And view in Drupal is a tough one because there is no easy way how to move view layer from theme into components. So there is no way how to place template in component. And on easy way, I mean there is no way to do that without custom code. So you should write a few functions or methods in order to provide template from, from your model, as example, for node or for some specific field. And this is in progress. This is something that we are working right now. So the next thing that should be out, out of the box and component, this is the grayscale design. And the grayscale design, it means that components should provide some basic and default styles for the component. So in case if we enable it even on Bartik in Drupal, in Drupal 7 or in Drupal 8, so it will have good looking just with a black and white design. So with that, we can just create new themes and out of the box everything will look will looks good. We just should write a few CSS uh, lines in order to make it even better than if it's out of the box in the component. And of course, tests. Right now we have tests that are uh, stored in general, in general for the whole distribution, but at some point we will get tests in the components. So, Question, question to you guys. Do you know the common problem of most Drupal distributions? Any ideas? Upgrade. Upgrade. 
Any other ideas? So yeah, those are good ones, but <laughs> but the the common problem of most Drupal distribution, it's difficult to disable modules and components that they are provide or out of the box. So I think you've experienced that use case when you install new fancy distribution, you you realize that you need only small part of this distribution and you are trying to disable some specific modules and components from this distribution, and you just decide that, all right, I will just create new website from scratch. I will not use that distribution at all. So in my experience, this is the most, the most common problem of almost all Drupal distributions that we've ever used. So, and with that, now decoupled is our favorite word because we put decoupled in every task that we create for the developers and they understand that. When they create new module, new component, something new for the project, they treat it as something separate that should be isolated from the system. So, and with that, we have minimum dependencies on other components. So, it works the same as with Drupal modules. You create module, you specify a few dependencies on other modules, and here we go. You just have dependencies. You do not place your, I don't know, content type in the just garbage of all configurations file, files. You just put into some specific place where you always know how to get it from there. And based on this, based on component, uh, architecture, uh, our project from the code perspective looks really good because it looks like we've just cleaned it up like this guy on the slide. So we always know where to find some specific component, where to find some specific module where we should place, as example, alter. And we always know how to disable specific components because as I mentioned, there are small MCAs that needs only a small piece of the distribution and everything else should be disabled and turn it off. So if we take a look at the open wire architecture from the business perspective, first of all, we have two basic layers in the distribution. We have the data structure, we have a lot of core features, and we have the presentation layer that is visible on the website for the potential customers and potential members. Also, we have a lot of CRM uh, sorry, a lot of third-party services that we should create integration with. We have web applications, social applications, mobile applications, and even equipment at the branches that we should interact with when members of the YMC visit their branches. And of course, on top of this, we have analytics and tracking in order to track all activities that uh, happen in the open Y on the third party services and even at the branches with equipment. So, and in order to support that, we create the integration layer in order to interact with third party services. And we expose data through the data layer from the distribution to analytics and tracking. And we are using web services in order to provide support for third party services and their API and interact eventually with the fitness equipment and mobile applications. So if we take a look at the components that we have inside OpenY, inside base layers, we have the data structure, we have the setup of content types, media types, taxonomy terms, and vocabularies. So for the core features, we have a lot more features that you may see on the slide. There is just not enough space to place them. So, for example, we have location finder, web forms, personalization, alerts, and a lot more things. And on the presentation layer right now, we have only one theme that called Open Wire Rolls, but at some point we will have a lot more features, sorry, a lot more themes. And there is also always a way to create your custom theme. So, for the third party services, we create integration with theorems, like Actinet, Personify, with digital asset management systems, with marketing system like Salesforce, Marketing Cloud, with A-B testing system, donation, etc. A lot more third-party services. 
also, we have the analytics on top of this. So in order to track all activities in all places. So if we get back to our YMC types, we, and if we reflect the complexity for every YMCA, so it's really obvious that for small YMCA, we have the small complexity in the distribution because they need only a few content types, they need only a few basic features, and they will use some basic theme from the distribution. For medium, uh, for the medium YMCAs, they have also medium complexity. So they need a few more content types and few more features, maybe integration with free exercises, and that's it. And the complexity of large YMCA is pretty high. So they just need everything. They just need everything, integration with every single third party service, all content types, all media features, and, and so on. And we, we are happy to say that parts of the distribution, they are decoupled enough, so they are not related to Y specifics at all. You can just take them and use. As example, on my projects I'm using, like on my own projects, I'm using media feature, I'm using landing page wizard, I'm using analytics and tracking, so I've just took them from the distribution and eventually I will get, I will get updates for free from the community, so that's, that's cool. And after, when we've created like enough uh, flexible, uh, flexible architecture for the open one, so we realized that the next challenge is integration with third-party services. So it's always painful process for the development team in order to create integration with third-party services. And on painful, I mean, it's always fun. It's really fun, yeah. So we've created a few basic rules how to create integration with third-party services. So we just ask a question. Is it a background job that should do something in the background? If the answer is yes, we just create new service. That could be Drupal 8 service, that could be trash command, that could be cron job, but we just create something that will be triggered at some point by some system. So next question, should it be displayed to the customers? So in case if it should be displayed to the customers, we create new component and place it on the page. So here is, our great example with landing page again. So we have a few blocks out of the box, but at some point we realized we have the boring component with a list of blog posts that should be replaced with the free group exercise classes and schedule. And we just easily replace that block on the homepage. So we've created component, we've created module, we've set up the content structure for that. With the next release, we've just released that component and then content editors are able to place it on the page. And then at some point again, we realized that we would like to replace that boring block with the list of products for personal trainings. And also instead of banner, we would like to place the personal training schedule form. So we just created three new components and said to content editors, here we go. Now they are available in the content editing workflow, so you can put them and place them on your pages. So after that, we've realized that we have the next challenge. The next challenge, easy installation process for non-technical and technical users. So here is the technical installation. So it, it looked like this. You just run the bus script, you have some progress bar, and eventually you will see that your OpenY installation has been finished. You can go and complete your installation through some wizard. Of course, I'm kidding, that's, that's not the actual installation of the OpenY, but in ideal world, at some point, we will have it right, like, like this. So you just run bash script, and you will get the website. So right now we have pretty similar bar script, that, but you will see there are a lot of weird lines, a lot of log output, but 
in ideal world, again, this should look like this. Even for technical guys, they, they really like cats, I guess. <laughs> so also, also we are working on the non-technical installation. We are working on this in order to provide and like make the customers, uh, make the interface for customers so they can set up even non-technical departments can set up new website just by using some, some features. As example, we will have the domain, you can specify the platform. As example, you have your own server on DigitalOcean, or you would like to set up Amazon server, server, or you have just custom server. And when you submit, eventually, so from the technical installation and non-technical installation, you, would, you will get to the place where you should complete default wizard for the Drupal installation. So you will go through default steps and also you will go through custom steps in order to select demo content that you would like to see on the website. You, you can select components that should be enabled by default and eventually you will get new website. Then the next step, you can customize that website. We have the theme by default of Envirals and we have feature that you can select predefined presets for that theme or just customize everything on the website in order to have your branded colors on the website. And then you can like complete DNS changes, go through some security checks, uh, go live checklist and announce your launch on Twitter, Facebook, being your friends, different departments and say, here we go, we've just launched a new website. And the magic part of that, then you will get new features from the community and magic word here for free. I haven't put that into the slide, but magic word for free because it works the same uh, in the same way as Drupal community. So someone can contribute. As an example, that could be YMC or just the individual contributor. And eventually with the new release, you will get new component or new feature on your website. So with that, we've realized that, all right, we have new website, we have a lot of different new websites and we should support somehow upgrade path for that. So, and of course, different YMCA's, small YMCA's, they can use just what we provide out of the box. Medium YMCA's, they can customize something and the large YMCA's, they build a lot of different customizations on top of the distribution. So let's, just imagine situation when in OpenY 1.0, we provide that fancy listing of blog posts with a lot more button. And then at some point on the live side, for example, developers or business owners, they decided to uh, change a lot more button to full pager. So that was the requirement for their specific website. But with the new release, in OpenY 1.1, we just change the label for this button. And we have a conflict here because this specific component, this specific configuration has been changed manually by the site owner and we are not able to provide upgrade for this one. So we've created a tool that we call OpenY Upgrade Dashboard where we display all places where we have conflicts. As example, we have the configuration name. Then we have specific property within this configuration where we have the conflict. And then we have path to the configuration, to original configuration that we have in OpenY. And we have list of actions. So you can edit that message, but potentially you will never do that. Or you can take a look at the difference between your actual configuration and between configuration and open Y, and you can delete that message. When you delete this message, you are just saying, all right, I've just resolved this manually, or I agree to reject the update from the new version of open Y. So you can decide in case if you should resolve that conflict manually, or you can just dis uh, remove that message from the dashboard by looking at the, at the diff. As example, for that use case, we are fine. We are we are good to go with the full pager because we do not need like that change for the label. 
And with that, we've got to the point, of course, we are using continuous integration in order to test everything. And we realized, so that's actually me, when I realized how many builds we should support for, for the continuous integration workflow. So let me explain. So the first build that we should have from the continuous integration that the fresh installation of OpenWire, that just installation out of the box from the installation profile. So the next one, we've seen the slide where we went through the installation process of Drupal 8. And of course, we've had custom steps there. And we should have an environment in order to go through the steps and verify that everything works fine there. And the next one, the great path. So this is the actual environment where we test updates from previous version to the new version. So we have three places, we should have three environments in order to just verify that developer successfully completed his job. And of course, additional environment for the BHAT tests, for code sniffers, and for a composer build that we are working right now in order to verify that our distribution will work good on all different PHP versions or on all different environments. And we eventually, we can, like, we can build the website using composer. So here is just an example of response from our CI server. We have First link leads to the fresh open wine installation where we see everything out of the box. The next one, the link to upgrade path installation where we can test our updates. And then link to the installation steps and the visor that we can use in order to verify installation steps. And of course, the report from BHAT tests. So here is the green report for the BHAT test, but in case if you see something in the red, you should go and do your work again and again and again until we have the green light here. So, and you know, with all those challenges, we think that we've successfully like released OpenWide 0.1 and that's the breakthrough for the YMC business. And why I will explain a little bit better, but first of all, we, we, we will take a look at OpenWide today what we have right now based on those challenges that we were struggling with. So first of all, we have the source code in Drupal.org, which is actually the mirror of GitHub repository that we are working on right now. So all the code pull requests issues, they are on GitHub. And the main website of the open wide distribution, openymc.org. Also, we have a few materials so the first one, the case study on Drupal.org in case if you're interested to actually read the story, why are we actually doing that? And why are we actually creating the community? Why we have the contributors for that? And the blog post from Dries and his blog about YMCA, about YMCA movement and breakthrough for their business. And in case if you would like to evaluate OpenY right now, so you can do that on your laptops, mobile devices, tablets. We have the sandbox environment. We have the public admin password and username. So you can go there, play with it, even ruin the website. Anyway, we will rebuild it in one hour. So, and based on that, I would like to make an announcement. So now with the OpenY 1.0, every YMC can get a new, secure, and powerful website in less than 15 minutes. So there is a link to YouTube video, that actually video from Craig, where he explains how to set up a new website with the default content, with a lot of different pages, with the membership calculator, with location finder in less than 15 minutes. And that the breakthrough for the YMCA business because now small YMCAs have an access to tool that will allow them to set up their new websites and get the features that they cannot afford before that moment. So, and our next focus is building the community 
and like involve contributors because as you know, without the community, product will not survive. And on community, I mean not only the community of YMCAs who is going to contribute to the project, but also without support from the Drupal community. So you may wonder how you can contribute. So that's pretty easy process and straightforward. First of all, you can create a fork of main project on the GitHub. Then you can find some interesting issue or just contribute documentation or something to the project. Then create new pull requests, write steps for review, and ask maintainers to actually review, review your, your pull request, and maybe merge pull requests so eventually you will get some commits on Drupal.org. So also, there are a lot of other ways how you can contribute to the project. You can work on the documentation, design, user testing, translation, content, just be as a volunteer. So there are a lot of other different ways how you can contribute. And the benefits for that, of course, everyone is looking for benefits. First of all, you can go to OpenY Expert. You can learn the distribution. You can learn approaches that I'm talking uh, that I was talking about. You can learn the workflow approach. Uh, I don't know, continuous integration, upgrade path tool, and eventually, if you will contribute, you will get the Drupal or credits and comments on the Drupal.org. And the next one, you can keep the momentum and based on this, get new clients to your organization because in case if you're an OpenY expert or your organization has been contributed to the OpenY some specific feature, you can just go to YMC and say, hey, I'm an expert in the integration with ActiveNet and I would like to build new website based on OpenY because we have that feature accepted in there. So we are, we are like happy to help with that. So, and eventually at the end of the presentation, I would like to say thank you to the whole team. So we have a lot of different folks who is not here and I just represent the whole team that we may see on the slide. Thank you very much for all your work, for all your effort. Uh, uh, and who knows, maybe here right now we have the new contributors and new team members who will contribute to the project. So as I mentioned, our next focus is building the community. So based on this, I would like to invite you to Friday sprints. We will have first time sprint or workshop and general sprint and we will have we will have the open wide sprint track at the general sprint on Friday. So please evaluate our session. This is really important to get some feedback. There is just quick link, you can open it and leave some comment. Thank you very much that the time for the questions. This, this looks really, really fabulous. I've, I've built something similar for the ACLU and I, I like some of the things that you, you guys are doing here. Um, so so it, it, it seems that the, the distribution focuses mainly on like the content modeling and, and, and content for specific to, to the YMCA and then the, the in integrations with, with the third party services. When you were, when you're thinking about, you know, how to approach this problem, did you consider it all um, maybe building on top of another distribution that might handle some of the kind of like lower level details and then you focus on the stuff that's specific to the, to the why? Yeah, so when we started building the distribution, so the question was, let me just repeat the question. Question was if we were looking at the other distributions when we started building the open Y, so there were a chance to build open Y on top of some distribution, right? So we were looking at the Lightning, at the Open Social, and the, the next, the, another one, the Thunder, right? So Thunder distribution. But we didn't want to have a dependencies on something that is out of our control because we may have some crazy ideas that will not work with those distributions. And it was easier to create everything from scratch because we've had a lot of different websites on Drupal. 
and we've had a lot of different features of, on them. So we've, we were just working with those contributors, with those open wise. We were taking features from there and we were adding them to the fresh Drupal 8 installation. And then on top of this, we just put our custom theme. Mm -hmm. So that's everything what we've done. And yeah, so we, we were looking at some distributions, but we are not using them. We are building everything from scratch. Right. And then kind of similarly to that, would you consider like pulling away the, the non, uh, the, the, the stuff that isn't specific to the Y, pulling that into a separate distribution of your own that's more generic and then just adding a second distribution on top that's more Y specific? So that's a good idea, but I think actually maybe we will get at some point to the place Maybe in Wizard, we will have just to select which features you would like to see. We will have the groups, as example, those are for small YMCAs, for big YMCAs, for medium YMCAs, and maybe in case if you will install the distribution, you will find something for your nonprofit organization, even though you are not YMCA. But right now, our focus is just distribution for YMCAs. So correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, no, I think that's great. I want to go back to the first point. When we started building this, it was right after Drupal 8 had been released, and so there weren't a ton of distributions as well, and we wanted to be on 8 for future growth, and so that was part of what uh, went with that as well. Um, regarding would we ever get to a point where we would decouple the YMCA-specific parts and have a version that you could say, I'm just a nonprofit, I, or anybody in, 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 the, in the world, and I want to use this distribution, but I'm not a YMCA. That is very much the long-term plan of this. We'd like to see that happen. Um, we would love it if more people use the distribution, provide us with feedback so we can make it better for everybody. Um, that's being mission-driven as part of the whole movement of Open Y, making this uh, something that could help everybody out. Great. I've, I've got more questions, but I think I'll let someone else go first. Yeah. yeah. Um, I like how you approach uh, the upgrade dashboard, and it, I see it beneficial for like different distributions. Do you have any plans of making it generic for other distributions? Yeah, so actually this is the component, again, that's the component of our system. This is just custom module that is used, that is using, I guess, one country module. So it's really, easy way to make it at the country module and contribute to Drupal.org, but I think we just need a little bit more time in order to do that finally, and maybe some volunteers who can do that and help with that. Thank you. A question about the tools you're using for continuous integration, that uh, slide you showed where it listed the different sort of development environments for commit or whatever it is looked awesome. Is that all custom? Or so the question, if we are using any tools for the continuous integration uh, support. Now, we are at the FW, we've, we've built the CI box, continuous integration open source project. And this continuous integration was built on top of the CI box. There are a lot of customization because building usual Drupal website, it's much easier than building something from the installation profile where you do not have the Drupal core, you do not have the, uh, example, Docker containers or something like background. So we've built that on top of CA box. So if, if you think about what's involved in having a website, you can break it down into kind of three different pieces, like making, like building, building the website, bringing your legacy content in and then um, ongoing support and maintenance for that site. For, for that third piece, uh, like e e even for like a, a, a smaller Y, like there's, there's someone's got to be there to like upgrade to open Y 1.1 or, or, or whatever. Um, is, is there some, you know, b because it, it, it looks like they're all hosted on, on many different places, is, is there some sort of system that's kind of built in or on top of this that's kind of it, uh, in, makes that whole process easier or more, more mm -hmm. consistent across the, the whole organization. Yeah. So, yeah, the question is if we like provide any tools in order to support different instances of the website, and there are a lot of different small MCAs. So I just have to uh, like uh, repeat the question for the recording. 
Uh, so in the long term run, uh, under the hood of that wizard that you've seen for the non-technical installation, I guess we may have some kind of platform where we will support the small YMCAs that do not have IT department in order to work on some infrastructure for the website. So that could be like beneficial for small and maybe medium YMCAs to have that tool. So there could be a dedicated team who will support those websites, who will support the upgrade path, who will support all those conflicts that we may see in the upgrade path dashboard. But that's only kind of idea that Maybe at some point we will get to that and work on that where we will have like that when that will be the main priority. Mm -hmm. Craig? Yeah, yeah, I'd like to jump in on that as well. You hit on the last mile, right? I'm a small YMCA, great, I want to use OpenY. What do I do next, right? I, I can't I can't afford a hundred thousand dollar web host. What am I gonna do? Um, so what we've been talking to or what we've been doing is talking with some of the larger YMCAs and looking at pooling our resources to build such a platform potentially in partnership with FFW or another agency, maybe Acquia or Pantheon. Um, there's some, there are a couple of organizations that already service nonprofits in that regard, providing 24 seven support, ongoing updates, et cetera. But there has to be something that is uh, very cost effective for those small YMCAs. We believe that there are a few out there. Uh, we've connected some YMCAs with partners that can do that. Um, in the interim, because these YMCAs are all independently hosting their sites today, by making the distribution freely available to them, we've removed that barrier for adoption of saying, look, y you can use it as is on your current web server, you know, your LAMP server, et cetera, or if you can wait a little bit of time, we think that there might be some better options or other options that are more scalable and could keep everybody a little bit under the same house to make that upgrade path even easier. And, and what about that, that middle section, the, the, the mic migrating my, my legacy content in? Is, is there something built in that more than, more than just what's in Drupal 8 core is. Yeah, so the question is the migration of content, right? So there's a couple different paths. One is, as I mentioned earlier, we're working with that charter school in Minneapolis that's providing opportunities to 15 to 19 year old uh, students. They get uh, school credit, et cetera. We're working with them to build some of our demo content. They also offer the ability to copy and migrate content over to OpenY sites. Um, most of the smaller YMCAs will have anywhere from only 50 to 100 pages. What we are starting to focus on with the 1.1 distribution is making it very easy to just copy and paste. I'd like to see in the 1.2 and beyond, effectively a machine learning based wizard where I can say, here's my current site, here's the new IP address, copy over my content, get me 80 to 90% of the way there, where all I have to do is go through and massage a few things. That's the long term path we'd like to see happen. Thanks a lot. Thank you. That's a great job. Um, I had a question on governance. I know you mentioned collaboration, um, but I guess how do you determine what gets built? You have a small organization has an ask, they think it's really gonna help them. And you have organizations, the larger ones, that have larger asks. How do you prioritize that um, through, through something more specific than just collaboration? Yeah, absolutely. That's a, so it's a great question. How do we handle prioritization of our roadmap, the features we go after, et cetera? <clears throat> so we look at a variety of different things. We look at what's the demand for the feature, not just the size of the YMCA, but how many people could this serve, right? Um, regard, you may be a large YMCA, but maybe this feature only helps your small, your, your market out, but isn't going to help the, the broader majority. So we look at that as part of our, our decision-making process. We look at what's the cost to build that new feature. We look at how many YMCAs made that feature benefits, so not just the people they serve, but there's four major CRM platforms that the 800 YMCAs in the United States partner with. The largest by far is Daxco. We in the Twin Cities, we use Personify. So it's, I have to look at what I wanna go after, Personify integration, and say, you know what? Maybe some of those elements have to wait a little bit because 90% of the YMCAs are on Daxco. And then the final element is just the overall level of effort. How hard is it to build this thing? Is it really, really easy? Is it hard? Um, we calculate all of that. We've got a big spreadsheet with our entire backlog, and we use that to determine what should we be going after, and then we review it on monthly calls with the YMCAs that are participating in OpenY, that 45 and growing list, and say, look, here's what we're building. Here's what we're doing over the next few weeks, next few months. How do we feel about this? And for the most part, um, it's worked quite well, knock on the, the podium. It seems to be working quite well in that regard. 
I anticipate at some point we will hit some conflicts where people will say, you know, I want this, no, I want that. Um, and again, we, in my opinion, data hopefully will trump emotions in some of those uh, situations. So it's a group of 45 then, it's basically who's making these decisions based off the input that you all are putting forward? Yeah, so uh, a few months ago we had an OpenY summit in Houston. It was open to agencies, technology providers, and at the time there was about 20 to 30 YMCAs. If you come to those summits, that's where a lot of these big decisions get made, and we do two a year. So for today, there's 45 YMCAs. Over time, that's going to grow um, hundreds and hundreds, we hope. Um, and yes, we, we want that feedback. We need that feedback loop so that we can continue to make the right decisions of what we're prioritizing and going after. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. I'm really curious about what you guys are doing for, I mean, you might have touched on this feature, but are you providing any features dealing with commerce? I mean, you've got memberships, you've got people making purchases right at the counter. <coughs> Is this a third party integration or you guys actually uh, have this tool as a feature in the distribution? So the question is, do we have the ability to integrate with commerce? That is exactly why we chose Drupal when we were looking at what platform to go down, WordPress or Drupal, um, was the ability to do e-commerce long term. Right now with 1.0, no, right? It's just effectively a marketing website. Long term, it has to do e-commerce, and that's exactly what we want to go after. As I mentioned, there's those four CRM platforms that we need to integrate with independently because that's the effectively the point of sale terminal at these YMCA's. So like, like I said, we use Personify in the Twin Cities, a lot of them are using Daxco. So first we have to build those hooks, those API integrations in, need to make sure that everything we're doing is PCI compliant, um, and then start whittling away at e-commerce. That absolutely is the, is the long-term vision of this. Awesome, that's everybody's questions. Thank you again, everybody, for the time. <laughs>